Hey, what's up guys and welcome to my second video this week. I know that's pretty rare and to make it rarer still, this is actually my first full collaboration video. So this week I partnered up with my friend Jess who runs another channel about studying and learning called fittingly study with Jess. And I thought it'd be really cool to do a video on how to manage stress since we're just about into finals right now. And hopefully you'll be able to use some of the tips in this video to manage any stress that you're feeling. Hey everyone, so when I was studying my postgraduate diploma of psychology, I learned a great deal about stress, but also some really effective techniques that you can implement throughout the year to help you feel more calm and stay on top of your stress levels. So I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for reducing stress and staying calm throughout the busy school year. But before I get into that, I actually wanted to cover what is stress and what happens in our body when we start to feel stressed. So stick around. So what is stress? Stress is your body's reaction to any change in the environment that requires an adjustment or a response. The body then reacts to these changes with either physical, mental or emotional responses. So in daily life, we often use the term stress to mean something negative, but that's not actually the case. Stress can either be positive or negative, known as eustress or distress. So eustress is the term used for describing positive stress. And this is the kind of stress that motivates us, increases our focus, gets us excited and increases our performance. Some examples of eustress could be receiving a promotion, starting a new job or having a child. In contrast to eustress, distress is the term used for describing negative stress. And this is the kind of stress that impairs our focus, leaves us feeling anxious or nervous, often is perceived as outside of our coping abilities and impairs our performance. And some examples of distress could be losing a job, sickness or the death of a loved one. So what happens to our body when we start to feel stressed? In the event of stress, our body's defense systems are activated in a rapid and automatic response, known as the fight or flight mode. Your body then releases stress hormones called cortisol and adrenaline, which cause your heart to beat faster, your breathing to quicken, your blood pressure to rise, and your senses begin to sharpen. Also, your body is preparing you to either fight or flee the situation. So how much stress is too much stress? Some stress is good. In fact, it actually helps to improve our performance and increase our focus so that we can execute a task more effectively. But at what point does having too much stress impair our performance? The inverted U model or yerkes dodson law shows the relationship between stress or arousal and performance. This model, demonstrated by a bell-shaped curve, says that up to a point, stress actually improves our performance, but when it becomes too high, it makes our performance drop rapidly. So let's put this graph into perspective, shall we? For example, you sit down at your desk to take an exam. As you turn that page over, you can feel your heart start to beat a little bit faster. You can feel your breath start to quicken. You feel wide awake and focused, and maybe even a little bit eager to keep turning those pages and tackle that exam. This scenario would be demonstrated by the middle of the curve, showing that you've experienced an optimal level of stress and your performance is actually improving. But what if we actually turned up the level of cortisol and adrenaline pumping through your body? This time, you sit down at your desk to take an exam and as you turn that page, your breathing quickens, you feel a pit at the bottom of your stomach and the thought of actually trying to fathom what these questions are becomes overwhelming. This scenario would be demonstrated by the bottom of the curve, showing that you've actually experienced too much stress and your performance is impaired. So how can we manage stress to stop it from getting the better of us? Well, here are my top five tips. Tip number one is to do some deep breathing. So when doing deep breathing, you're actually switching on your parasympathetic nervous system to create a calming effect. Try to increase your exhalations to be longer than your inhalations. Breathing into the count of four and then breathing out to the count of six can have a really calming effect on the mind. Tip number two is to use positive self-talk. Write down on a set of flashcards some positive statements starting with I. This way, you can pull them out at any time that you need and read over them to get you into a more positive mindset. Some examples of what you might like to write down, especially if you're just about to have a test, would be, I know that I have studied to the best of my abilities, or I have survived exams before, and my favorite is, I'm going to ace this exam. Tip number three is to seek support. So talking to a family member, a friend, or even a staff member can be really effective because it reminds us that we're not alone and often they'll come up with some really effective strategies as well. The next tip is to exercise and get outdoors regularly. So when you exercise, you're able to reduce your cortisol levels and also produce endorphins to make you feel better. The other great thing about exercising regularly is that it promotes a good night's sleep. Tip number five is to engage in self-care. Make sure you set aside at least 30 minutes every day to do something nice for yourself. Don't get consumed in all of your work and end up neglecting your own personal needs. 
It's important to prioritize yourself and have some important me time every day so that you don't end up feeling burnt out or run down close to the end of the year or even sooner. Some examples of what you might like to do for yourself could be to read a book, go to the park, play with a pet or even see your friends. So they're my top five tips for managing stress and I hope you found them helpful. All right, I'm gonna hand you back over to Thomas. All right guys, so I really hope you enjoyed Jess's part of the video. And before I close this video out, I've just got a couple of different things I wanna mention. Number one, if you're looking for some more note-taking hacks, I actually made a video about that topic on her channel, so you can click right there to watch it. And also, I just really encourage you to go over to Jess's channel and check out some of her videos and subscribe if you like them, because she's one of the few people that is also dedicating all of her time to making videos about studying and learning here on YouTube. That is all I've got for this video, so thanks so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next week. Hey there guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, it would be awesome if you gave it a like to support this channel. And you can also subscribe using the big red button right there to get new tips on being a more effective student every single week. You can also pick up a free copy of my book on earning better grades by clicking the picture in the book. And if you missed the other video I did this week, it's over how to build a study schedule for your finals. So definitely check it out. Lastly, I'm Tom Franklin on both Instagram and Twitter if you want to connect, or you can just leave a comment down below.